Cheat code. Support strategist. By clouds. My head in the clouds not coming down. On AO3. Chapter 61. Hints. Izuku wrote down Ochako's current position as Itoshi hurried through the tunnels. Even though they were all spread out throughout the school, Izuku had given them all con links so they could still communicate easily. He'd even given Mei one so she could still participate while she's fine-tuning some new toys for Tensei's wheelchair outside in the lab, while Izuku was on a computer in his workroom. If all went well, this experiment would both help Ochako improve her quirk and gather valuable information on how warping worked so Izuku could use it to find a way to track Kurogiri. Your accuracy has improved a lot, Ochako, Izuku rambled. But I'm really curious about how much control you really have when you warp, so we need to test your limits. Izuku watched over the cameras as Ochako nodded. That's where you're having Hitoshi hide, right? You want me to focus on finding my anger? Kinda, Izuku hummed thoughtfully. Assuming that you're actually warping gravity like we think you are, then what I really want to know is if you can appear anywhere your anchor's gravity is affecting. If you can, then theoretically you might even be able to appear behind a Kondra during a fight. That would be convenient, Hitoshi drawled. Izuku laughed. Yeah, I thought so too. That's why Hitoshi is going to stay in the tunnels, and you, Ochako, are going to try to end up in the hallway outside. Instead of in the tun- No, Ochako, I said not in the tunnel. Sorry, Ochako yelped. I didn't mean to work, but I just got distracted and- Oh, sorry, Hitoshi, did I hurt you? Izuku stifled his laugh as Ochako tried to untangle herself from Hitoshi. She had appeared very much directly on top of him, which wouldn't have been an issue if he hadn't been crawling through one of the larger passages. Unfortunately for Hitoshi, he'd been crawling through a tunnel that's barely enough room for one. Ocha- Ow! Hitoshi yelped. You're elbowing me. Maybe a little to the left, just- Sorry! Ochako was really trying, but there really wasn't enough room in the tunnel f to maneuver. Uh, at least we know I can't teleport into anything. Oh joy. Shinso deadpanned. Because I definitely wanted to be closer to you than I am at the moment. Move your foot, you're kicking me. Izuku, stop laughing, this isn't funny. Izuku snickered again. <laughs> kind of. Actually. Just have Gravity Girl teleport to someone else, May suggested. It's probably quicker than whatever gymnastics you two are trying to do. Instantly, both Hitoshi and Ochako stopped squirming. Oh. Izuku heard a thump as Ochako landed on the floor by May's desk. Hitoshi glared around the tunnels, obviously looking for whatever camera Izuku was using to spy on them. You couldn't have mentioned that earlier? Nope. May chirped. Now get going, Izuku. Needs data for his program. And try not to land on Hitoshi this time, Izuku added. Ochako winced. My bad. She took a deep breath, and Izuku was gathering all the data he could as she disappeared. There had been some identifiers that was unique to every teleporter. He just had to find it. By studying Ochako's jumps, he could find her identifier, and then theoretically, he should be able to exploit that data and use it to find other teleporters. At the end of the day, to find Kirigiri, he just had to figure out what made him different from Ochako. Good job, Ochako. You're just a few hallways away from your target. Izuku hurried to write everything down before the next round. Hitoshi, find a new position. Let's do this again. I really don't know why you all find this entertaining. Shoto said calmly, his character getting eaten by a zombie yet again. You just watched me die twenty times in a row. Shiraki snorted. We just like watching you make a fool of yourself. It's like watching a guy get hit in the nuts. It's funny. Wow. Shoto deadpanned. Maybe I should have streamed my childhood. You would have found that hilarious. Shigaraki rolled his eyes. Is your old man letting you back in the door yet? It's been a while since he kicked you out, right? Oh, I can go back any time. 
Shoto shrugged. But that would involve apologizing to him, so no thank you. As odd as it was to talk about his family life with a villain, it was actually one of his favorite parts of the whole thing. Their watchers didn't seem to care what they talked about, mostly focused on how they interacted rather than what content their conversations. So they mostly just talked about whatever. They had to avoid any topics that were too closely linked to their identities, which meant that Shoto didn't get any info on the League's movement and Shigaraki didn't get any info on UA. But Shoto had enjoyed having a place to share his conspiracy theories, so he didn't mind too much. It was kind of funny, actually. You're really choosing to sleep in an alley when you could be in bed? Shigaraki asked. You must be crazier than I am. Shoto shrugged. It's not too bad. I probably need a job, though. My sister taught me how to use a laundromat, but the money the old man gave me when he kicked me out is almost gone. Then again, he was planning on me crawling back after less than a week, so whatever. Shigaraki gave him a look. You do realize you already have a job, right? Shoto frowned. Are you talking about my internship? That was only a week, and I didn't get paid. Ugh, you're such a noob, Shigaraki huffed. We make money from streaming, you know. If you need more, we can just start a merch line or something. I'm sure at least some of these NPCs will pay for a sweatshirt or something. Shoto blinked. Oh, cool. Shigaraki rolled his eyes. You're hopeless. What is up with that, chat? Why are you all going so crazy? Hmm. Shoto frowned and scanned some of the messages. Apparently they're concerned about my childhood and yours. Why? I had a great childhood after Sensei saved me. Shigaraki paused the game and looked at the chat. What are they freaking out about? Your childhood wasn't that weird. Shoto shrugged. I mean... It was kind of bad. Most people's parents don't hit them, trying to make them into a perfect child. Maybe he shouldn't be saying this, but it wasn't like anyone was ever going to find out who he was, so maybe he was a little careless. Whatever, it was just one more thing that would piss off his dad. Plus, Shigaraki already hated Endeavor, like he hated all heroes, so he wouldn't make a big deal of it. Instead of shrugging his comment off like usual, however, Shigaraki kept the game paused, and stared at him in confusion. They don't? Shoto shrugged. I wouldn't really know, but I don't think so. Most parents see their kids as kids rather than successors. Shigaraki huffed and unpaused the game. Oh, you're just trying to prank me, that makes sense. I'm gonna kill you for that. Shoto raised an eyebrow. In game or in real life? I mean, you've tried both already, so... I'm not gonna kill my streaming partner, you idiot. Shigaraki snapped. Seriously, why is the chat still going crazy? How many people did you get on this stupid prank, Icy Cat? Nobody, Shoto said, rooting through the chat as his character died. But from what they're saying, I think we both had messed up childhoods. Did your sensei treat you like a masterpiece? Yeah, but that's what a parent's supposed to do. Shigaraki started to scratch at his throat. Sensei needs to train me. To carry on his legacy. Did he ever give you a choice? Shoto asked. Because I'm sleeping in an alley rather than to be forced to further my old man's legacy. And according to, well, everyone, apparently it's just us. Shigaraki scratched a little harder. Shut up! You're just, you're lying. No. Shoto shook his head sympathetically. We're not, but we can drop it if you want. Let's just play the game. Shigaraki growled. That's the only smart thing you've said all stream. Manena handed the paper over to Kirigiri, who looked at it with an unreadable expression. Where did you find this? In the support labs, like all for one suggested, Manena said. I've narrowed Chico down to two students. Kirigiri nodded. And you haven't captured them yet because... Because if they disappear right after I visit them, it ties their disappearance back to me. Manetta glared at him. And if you haven't noticed, I'm not an idiot. No need to be so hostile, Kirikiri dismissed. Just make sure you don't cause unnecessary delays to Sensei's plans. Manetta rolled his eyes. Again, I'm not an idiot. Now if you'd excuse me, I have better things to do. Kirikiri sighed. 
One more thing, Trapper. Now that Spinner is gaining some popularity as Stain's successor, it would be beneficial for him to acknowledge his connection to us. We need to add more power to the ranked if we expect to fulfill Sensei's vision. Don't worry, Mineta didn't flinch away from Kirigiri's gaze. I'll make it happen. Okay, I don't have much notes on Izuku's whole experiment with Hitoshi and Ochako, um, other than that was fucking hilarious to read, and even more hilarious to imagine. That, it's just funny. I find that hilarious for some reason, and, and I especially imagine their faces of, why didn't I think of that before when Mei suggested to just teleport instead of whatever they were doing, right? I... That's hilarious. I love that so much. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was the Trauma Brothers. And now I understand why the Trauma Brothers are here. Oh my god. But, okay, Trauma Brothers, you know, just streaming, having fun, trauma bonding. Love that. Oh my god. Shigaraki and Todoroki are so similar. I can't... They're both... You know, they were both, as kids, brought up to be the successors of... E, like some other adult, right? In Todoroki's case, his father, and Shigaraki's place, his not biological father, but let's be honest, kind of father, sensei, authority figure in some way, shapes, or forms, right? But practically father because, like, you know, Shigaraki was brought in when he was little, right? When he barely developed his quirk, quote unquote. I'm still in the big belief that, you know, all for one gave Shigaraki that damn quirk right so very much in the whole he developed this quirk when he was what five six at the latest and then you know all for one brought him in and then started to practically not practically he basically groomed him into being you know this quote-unquote not masterpiece but what he needed Shigaraki to be to fulfill his plans it's fucked up and it's similar to Todoroki's, right? Obviously, Todoroki was, you know, um, made to fulfill um, his father's plans and also basically groomed to become a hero and stronger than his father to surpass All Might. And it's fucked up. And you know what? They're trauma bonding over it, except Shigaraki doesn't want to accept it because, you know, his grooming goes deep. It goes deep, deep. Because obviously, Todoroki fucking hates his father, right? Shigaraki views All For One as some sort of savior, right? It's basic, classic uh, manipulation tactic, you know? Instead of viewing your manipulator as a horrible person, view them as the one person who saved you. You know, you're, you're the person who could do no wrong because this person cares about you or whatever. And... Oh my god. I I now understand why this duo, this this the trauma boys is in this fanfic. They're so similar. And you know what? I want more of them. Trauma boys. Trauma boys. Trauma boys. As always, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night. Join our community Discord server. Link is in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.